This is Unit 1, The Living World Ecosystems. Let's begin by looking at some pictures. Which organisms do you see in each picture? How are the locations alike and different? How are the organisms found in each of these locations alike and different? In the study of ecology, we learn about the interactions of organisms with each other and with their environment. Let's review some basic vocabulary terms. The cell is the smallest functional unit of life. This means that it carries out all processes found in all living things, such as taking in food, releasing wastes, and reproduction. The organism is an individual living thing composed of many cells. A goldfish is the example of an organism in the diagram. A population is a group of individuals of the same species living in a particular place. A group of goldfish living in the same pond is an example of a population. A community is several populations of different species living in a particular place. In the diagram, you can see several different species living together in the community. An ecosystem is several communities of different species interacting with each other and their non-living environment. We refer to living things as biotic factors and non-living things as abiotic factors. In the diagram, the water and rocks represent the abiotic factors. The diagram also shows a biome, which is a larger area, and the biosphere, which includes all areas where living things are found on or near Earth. Let's now look at relationships between organisms. One concept we must understand is the idea of trophic levels. Trophic levels are defined as the successive levels of organisms consuming each other. It shows the hierarchy of feeding levels. On this slide, we see two food chains. The one on the left is a terrestrial food chain, and the one on the right is an aquatic food chain. The food chains show the feeding relationships between the organisms. In the terrestrial food chain, the flower is eaten by the grasshopper, that is then eaten by the mouse, that is then eaten by the snake, that's eaten by the hawk. Notice the levels of the food chain. The flower is the producer, the grasshopper is the primary consumer, the mouse is the secondary consumer, the snake is the tertiary consumer, and the hawk is the quaternary consumer. Now let's look at each level. Producers are organisms that carry out photosynthesis and thereby make their own energy. They're also called autotrophs. Examples of producers are plants and phytoplankton. Consumers are organisms that must eat other organisms in order to get energy. They cannot make their own energy through photosynthesis. Another name for consumers is heterotrophs. Consumers can be classified as herbivores or carnivores. Herbivores eat producers and may also be called primary consumers. Carnivores eat other consumers and may also be called secondary consumers. Some examples of herbivores are squirrels, deer, and giraffes. And some examples of carnivores are owls, wolves, and lions. A secondary consumer is a carnivore that eats primary consumers, as shown by this fox eating a rodent. A tertiary consumer is a carnivore that eats a secondary consumer. In this diagram, the tertiary consumer is the brown bear. An omnivore is an organism that eats both plants and animals, both producers and consumers. Examples include bears, humans, and pigs. Detritivores are a type of decomposer. They specialize in the decomposition of dead tissues and waste products. The organic materials are broken down by the detritivores, and this is called detritus. It is usually parts of dead organisms and waste of living things. Examples of detritivores include worms, beetles, and slugs. 
scavengers feed on rotting carcasses called carrion. Examples of scavengers include vultures. The term decomposer is a general term referring to organisms that can convert organic matter into simpler forms that are then recycled back into the ecosystem. The two categories of decomposers are fungi such as mushrooms and detritivores such as worms. The decomposers play an essential role in an ecosystem because they recycle organic materials, the chemicals from dead tissues and waste back into the soil to then be reincorporated into living things. Bacteria are very important decomposers in all ecosystems and play an important role in the nitrogen cycle, which we will study later in this unit. Now, let's look at ways species interact with one another. There are four types of interspecies interactions, including competition, predation, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. Competition occurs between members of one species or between two different species when they both require the same resource. The resources include food, water, territory, or mates. One way that competing species can manage to coexist is through resource partitioning. Resource partitioning is using the resources in different ways, places, or at different times. It can reduce the negative impact on competition. In the picture of five different types of warblers, we see that they all share the same resource by feeding or nesting in different locations of the trees. This reduces competition for the same resource. Another example of resource partitioning is the various kinds of birds feeding at the seashore. Notice, they feed in different locations and on different kinds of organisms. So again, this results in reducing competition when feeding in the same general area. Another type of species interaction is predation. Predation occurs when one animal kills and eats another one. The predator kills and eats the prey. Some examples shown are the fox killing the rabbit, the bear eating the fish, and the lion chasing the zebra. An interesting general relationship exists between predator and prey populations as shown in this graph. The predator is the arctic fox and its prey is the snowshoe hare. Notice how the number of animals, which represents the population size, changes between predator and prey. If there is a decrease in prey numbers, there will be a decrease in predator numbers. If the prey population increases, the predator population increases. And generally, the prey population is larger than the predator population. Symbiosis is a general term for the interaction between two species in an ecosystem. It involves a close and long-term relationship. Three types of symbiosis include mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. A mutualistic symbiotic relationship occurs when two organisms interact in a way that is beneficial to both. An example is the sea anemone and clownfish. The sea anemone benefits because the clownfish attracts other fish which provide food for the sea anemone. The clownfish benefits because it gets protection from the sea anemone. Commensalism occurs when one species benefits but has little to no impact on the other species. An example is the cattle egret and the cow. The bird benefits from the cow by eating insects on the cow or insects that are stirred up as the cow walks through the grass. The cows are unaffected by the birds. Parasitism is the symbiotic relationship in which one organism basically feeds on another organism. The parasite benefits and the host is harmed. An example is humans and mosquitoes. The parasite is the mosquito that feeds on human blood and humans are the hosts that are harmed by the mosquitoes. So as you can see in a study of the ecology of an ecosystem, there are several types of interactions between organisms and roles that organisms play.